proud are you after you gave 55 points at Ole Miss last year, but this this year only 23 points in regulation and a lot less yardage? Uh, I'm proud of uh, just overall the whole team. You know, we didn't flinch not one time, you know. Um, in games like that, you know, them type of games all week, you know, we already knew them type of games you live up for, you know, that you uh, wait for to happen. But uh, to see, overall, to see our whole team, and especially like the defense and everybody just to come out that fast, and that was, that was like a big emphasis on what Coach Kelly was talking about, just starting fast, and the defense started extraordinarily fast. So, you know, when you see things like that and like you hold an offense like that to a, a low scoring amount like that, that's, that's a proud moment for you and your team. It starts with Blake Baker, but then all the other new coaches. Is, how much is it, of this is coaching this year? Uh, a lot of it, you know. Uh, I can I can speak for the edges ourselves, you know. Uh, Coach, Coach Peoples, you know, he uh, he making the emphasis just for uh, you know guys to go out there and uh, challenge themselves to be better every day. You know, you're not gonna be a hundred percent every day. You know, some days you're not gonna want to do it, but you know, he makes sure he pushes you and holds you to a standard that uh, makes you want to go out there and just compete for him. And uh, I really appreciate Coach uh, Peebles for that. You know, uh, he's been teaching me and Savion a lot of things. And, uh, you know, just overall, just they're just building a culture back in here. And they're just uh, doubling down on it. And after all the fun of Saturday, how mature is this team to get their collective feet back on the ground and know that Arkansas is going to, you know, come after you guys? Um, it shows the type of team we're going to be, you know. Um, not having the big hit after beating the team like that, you know, uh, just staying in the moment and uh, just – you know, putting this game past us, you know, we watched film yesterday and, uh, you know, we look at everything on Mondays and, you know, the next day, you know, our main thing is to throw that game away because we got a whole new great opponent that we finna go against, you know. Arkansas got a lot of great guys on offense, got a lot of key players they got, and, you know, that's going to be a physical game. So that's what we uh, focus on this week. Yeah, kind of how you were talking about watching film uh, on Monday. What maybe is some areas that you individually or the defense as a whole maybe can look to improve on? Um, just like little, just like just little nicks and dabs to it, you know. You know, we had a lot of like myself, like just overall, like Jackson Dart had two big runs, you know, and uh, I was keying the tight end most most of the time. And like, if I would have just keyed the tackle and just, you know, just played it and then shot it, you know, and you know, just. Fixing on the errors that I had, you know, I could have stopped a lot of those plays from like being big yard plays. So just, just knocking out the chunk plays, you know, same thing. But uh, the same thing I said last time, just keeping that mentality, bring that old LSU defense back. So it seems like your game every single week is developing. But what really about uh, what your your preparations week in and week out are really allowing you to create chaos in the backfield and really be involved in most of the defensive plays that we saw last week against Ole Miss? Um, you know, Coach Peoples always tell me, you know, so like during this whole season, he showed me like, okay, the weeks that I practiced hard and I had like an exceptional week at practice, look at the outcome of the game. So I feel like I took my preparation and practice like to a whole nother level and just like, just being, just honing in on the details and everything. And just when you winning, when you winning in practice and like you consistently like just getting it better in practice and like you consistently rep that thing over and over. You know, it just gets easier for you. So it's like on game day, it just feel like everything just feel way easier, and I'm able just to play fast. What has led to Savion's success on the other end? Uh, the same thing with me, you know, Coach Peoples. You know, uh, Savion is just, you know, he a high motor guy, and you know, Savion work hard, just like the next man. You know, Savion work hard. You know, Savion took a big leap in uh, losing his weight. I think that was his big thing that uh, that that played a role in for Savion. You know, cutting down and fixing his diet up. And uh, ever since he's been doing that, Sav Savion been explosive off the edge, able to bend the corner, get back there and make a lot of plays. Whit Weeks, this guy that we interview, who's all smiles yeah. and looks like he's enjoying every second of every day. Is that how he is all the uh, time? I probably haven't seen a day in like two years that I've been here. I've never seen a day where I've seen Whit like really come in and not smile. He may come in quiet, but you know, I love Whit to death. You know, Whit always smiling. You know, he comes in. That's a fellow Georgia boy. You know. Love Wick. Wick got energy every day. He, even if he's hurt, like today we just had practice today. We out there hurting. Everybody out there hurting. But Wick got the energy, you know. You know, he's still hurting. He, Wick didn't play, everybody didn't play a lot of snaps. But, you know, Wick energy is just contagious. It just, just fills up a room. You just love it. 18 tackles, huh? That's crazy. That's a bad man. I told you, that's a bad man. 18 tackles. It's like every time I look around and I see him somebody get to the next level, you just see Wick come out of nowhere just swan time bombing and getting them. Like, it's crazy. Tell me about your big tackle. Fourth and one, they go for it. Fourth and one, I feel like that was probably my biggest play of my career. You know, um, you know, 
Because, you know, I always wanted to take the next step in uh, being a run defender. You know, I just didn't want to just be a third down guy, you know. But just being able to get in there, you know, coaches putting us in the right spots, you know. Didn't get the call, but, you know, you just got to check whoop ass sometimes and just go get the ball. That's all you got to do. In terms of just the atmosphere of the game, where would you say this game this kind is, of This is this is the number one. That was the number one game for me. Uh, crowd get you know, crowd rush the field. You know, we in a we in a dog fight. We all miss the whole game. It goes down to overtime. You know, them type of games that you sit down like when you was a kid and you watch like you just sitting back and just watch it on TV and then like now you're a part of it, and it's just like, sheesh. That's a different atmosphere. That atmosphere in Baton Rouge was crazy. Like. The light show, like, look, I don't know what they had on their wrist. I didn't even know that was happening. But it was like after the fourth down stuff, I just saw everything start flickering. I'm like, oh, that was nice. On Saturday, you guys proved a lot of people wrong about the LCC yes, defense, the storyline. How did it feel to prove, like, like I said, all those people wrong and to prove that LSU's defense is legit? Um, you know, we still got a long season. So, you know, we still got to continue to prove people wrong, you know? So it's like, we don't, we're not trying to really lock in on like the little outside noise saying that we did good because it's like we still got tough opponents coming up and we just got to be able to stay consistent and consistently do that. So uh, we try not to get the big head about it and uh, we just trying to make everything an expectation for us now instead of being surprised by it, just make it an expectation.